Hello everybody, in this episode we are visiting one of the probably most famous national parks in the US and in the world, uh, which is Yosemite National Park. Yosemite National Park is located in California, around 300 kilometers from San Francisco and 500 kilometers from Los Angeles. It can be entered from several different locations, but be aware that the eastern entrance to the park closes down during winter. The main part of the park, and also the most famous, is definitely Yosemite Valley. But with its 3,000 square kilometers, Yosemite National Park is way more than only the valley. As I said, Yosemite National Park is probably one of the most famous national parks in the entire world. And for a good reason. Yosemite is known for its incredible mountain shapes and valleys and forests, its meadows and clashing waterfalls. It's really a paradise for landscape photographers. Although it's extremely touristy, especially in the summer season, you shouldn't cheat yourself from visiting this diamond on Earth. Yosemite contains arguably the most famous landscape location in the entire world, the Tunnel View. And you understand why. With a perfect overlook over the valley with El Capitan on the left, the Cathedral Rocks on the right, with the water from the Bridal Whale waterfall to break the balance, trees from the foreground leading all the way down through the valley and into Half Dome in the far background, the tunnel view is the perfect overlook picture. Elements like sunbeams, low-hanging clouds, rain, snow or fog just adds to this spectacular view. If there's a paradise on Earth, I don't think we will get any closer than this. It is the perfect romantic Disney location, no matter the season. The picture to get at the tunnel view is almost a no-brainer. The only thing to take into account is how far you zoom in. If you're using a rather broad focal length, you can add a foreground tree on the left to the composition, but be aware the elements in the valley becomes rather small. And if you're using a more narrow focal length, you can focus on the different details and elements. The viewpoint is located next to the road, so the light from the cars might hit the foreground trees, which can be a bit annoying, so you will have to plan your shots during night and morning. We arrived at Yosemite Valley during night time and I still remember the goosebumps and the awe and wonder feeling I had when I exited the car and went out onto the wall and looked all over the, the valley with El Capitan on the left and the Cathedral Rocks on the right and everything in the light from the moon. I guess it's that kind of same feeling you get when you meet uh, your big idol for the first time. I can't really recommend a best time of year to photograph the tunnel view, but during summer you will shoot into the sun, so be aware of that. Also, when the sun rises, it rises from behind El Capitan, so it will throw a huge uh, sunbeam into the valley, which can look absolutely spectacular also. The main problem we had when we were in Yosemite Valley was actually that the weather was too good. As a landscape photographer, the worst conditions is actually clear blue sky, which we had almost all the time we were there. For that reason, I decided to return two weeks later. Luckily, I got what I came for that afternoon. Clouds and fog in the valley to make a moody and dramatic picture. The picture is a seamless composite of several pictures I took during a period of hours to expose the different elements of the valley. We were in Yosemite Valley during the supermoon in November 2016. 
and I decided to shoot the moon from a location a bit further up the road on the other side of the tunnel view, where I calculated the moon would rise above half dome. What I completely missed was how fast uh, it becomes night when you are as far south as you are in Yosemite Valley. In Denmark and especially in Iceland, the sunrises and sunsets last way longer because you are located way further north on the earth. It was all dark when the moon was actually in position, so I had to blend uh, one of my sunset pictures with uh, a moon picture. Also just before the moon came into sight from behind El Capitan, it threw this huge moonbeam into the valley, which I also caught. It became a very spectacular, yet very minimalistic, abstract landscape picture. Another spectacular view in Yosemite National Park is what's known as the Valley View. It's basically the same as the Tunnel View, but from a lower perspective. You still have El Capitan to the left and the Cathedral Rocks and the Bridal Veil Waterfall to the right. The foreground has changed dramatically though. We have a few different choices of composition, but the main element is the Yosemite River. There's both a huge fallen tree, small mounds which pops out of the water, and other small logs and branches. You can also choose the simple reflection of the mountains in the water. At the time of the year when we were there, it wasn't really possible to get light on the foreground trees and the Bridalwell waterfall at once, so I'd recommend this location during the summer half of the year. Luckily I could get a beautiful reflective image during very early morning where the moon lit up the scene instead. Another famous overlook is the view you get from Glacier Point. To find Glacier Point you will have to drive out of the valley passing the tunnel view and turn left towards Glacier Point. Glacier Point closes down because of snow around start November and doesn't open up again before spring, late spring. There's a lot of different compositions to have at Glacier Point and there's even a small plateau for the daredevil. Now we didn't go onto the plateau because the signs around the place were pretty clear on the matter that you shouldn't go out there. Now just before you reach Glacier Point there's this bend in the road where the half dome rock is framed perfectly between a couple of trees with the road in the middle. That particular shot has been increasingly popular the past years or so, and I decided to make my own version uh, during night time with some light trails from the cars. One of the tourist highlights of Yosemite National Park is the Yosemite Falls. The falls are divided into two sections, the upper and the lower falls. We didn't spend much time at these waterfalls, but when you are there, they are definitely worth a visit. You can catch some beautiful pictures of the upper parts from the meadows in the valley using the wooden paths as leading lines. Far into the valley there's a trail that leads up to Vernal Fall. Vernal Fall is a 96 meter tall waterfall located 2 kilometers from the trailhead. The trail is one of the most popular in Yosemite, but it's actually quite steep at some places. There's a lot of compositions to be had along the river while you approach Vernal Fall, and when you're up there it's quite easy to get a shot with a person in front of the waterfall also. 
We didn't go further than Vernal Falls since we wanted to catch the sunset at another location, but if you continue up the trail for another few kilometers you'll get to Nevada Fall. And then there's of course the Ansel Adams Museum. It's a fine little museum and even if you're not an Ansel Adams fan, you can easily go in there and see some of the other pictures exhibited there from other photographers. It's a perfect little place to get a lot of inspiration. There were so many other well-known and well-visited and less known and less visited locations in Yosemite Valley and the entire park which we simply didn't have time to go to, but I would have loved to experience. The top of Half Dome, the hike to the top of Yosemite Falls and all the points along that ridge overlooking the valley, Ptolemy Meadows, Olmsted Point and Washburn Point, just to name a few. Yosemite Valley was an amazing experience and I could easily, easily spend a couple of years there living by myself only to photograph all the facets of Yosemite. Yosemite Valley is a must-see for any landscape photographer. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it was kind of long, but it's hopefully worth it. If you liked what you saw, I would appreciate a like and a comment, and you can subscribe to the channel if you want to follow even more onto this journey. In the next episode, we are going to a little place north of San Francisco, which is getting more and more famous on the social media. It's the Cypress Tree Tunnel.